afternoon pre-recorded with your host, Alec Hepperbibler. With us tonight, Reagan Jones and Alex Key, Ella Liu, J.P. Haley, musical guest Shelby and the Gaddies, and derivative format, and now your host, Alec Beverly! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Thursday Afternoon Pre-Recorded. I'm your host, Alec Haberly, but you may also know me from my many years as a gold medal fetching Olympic tennis ball boy. No, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I didn't actually win anything. It's just I would go fetch the medals for the winners. We have a wonderful show lined up for you today, uh, featuring Chinese cooking sensation Ella Liu. She's here promoting her new book, Cook with Ella, and will be cooking her very own Chinese dumplings. Uh, she's even agreed to let me help her here in our studio kitchen today, which is exciting for me. I'm very much hoping to learn something, mostly because I've become a little bit too friendly with Craig, my Uber Eats driver. I mean, uh, yeah, I used to give him spare keys so he could leave food for me after work, but I started noticing that some of my laundry detergent was missing, and i um, pretty sure I just entered a domestic partnership with Craig. I mean, it's just too easy to live your life online nowadays, you know? Uh, for instance, have you heard about that new social networking platform um, called Eyebrows? It's where users will actually upload pictures of their forehead in an attempt to share their thoughts with the world in the most secure way possible. Crazy stuff. Well, later on in the show, we also have up-and-coming director J.P. Haley, who's going to show us a clip from his new movie. He tells me it's a wild ride full of romance, action, adventure, and at least three Stan Lee cameos. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that man is immortal. He's just going to keep going on like the, like the whole Marvel Cinematic Universe. Speaking of which, I found out the other day that if you were to take uh, all those Marvel movies and then just marathon them in order, back to back, you still would not be cool to that girl in your psych class. Here tonight, we also have a live performance from Shelby and the Gaddies. Now, they may sound like a hipster band, but first, a message from our sponsors, followed by a quick news update. Uh, so stay tuned, relax, and welcome to Thursday Afternoon Pre-Recorded. excitable as they used to be. Fatigue, drowsiness, irritability, lack of bowel control, and inability to dance at clubs for long periods of time. And people at work are starting to notice. Hey Craig. See what I mean? Well then everything turned around when I found <clears throat> cocaine. Cocaine has helped me get back to my former glory. I no longer feel the crushing sadness of the entire world around me. Instead, I just feel great. Cocaine works with a revolutionary new chemical formula that invigorates your happy releasing molecules, totally jacks your inhibitor white blood cells, and crushes the sadsies. It overhauls your bloodstream while simultaneously ridding your body of all those unnecessary components, like teeth. Since trying cocaine, my social interactions have flown by, and my productivity is through the fucking roof. So try it today and get life's newest spice. Side effects of cocaine include nausea, upset stomach, death, constipation, headaches, anxiety, regrown virginity, insomnia, drowsiness, dizziness, heart palpitations, loss or increase of appetite, dry mouth, wet mouth, smash mouth, decreased sex drive, impulsive gambling, practice to practicing WWE moves on loved ones, sugar high, headache, increased sex drive, pregnancy, depression, death, coughing, more coughing, increased response time, addiction to powdered donuts, lightheadedness, discomfort, chills, fever, paranoia, death, and ostracizing yourself or your family. Trying cocaine was the best decision I've made in my entire life. Talk to your doctor today. Cocaine. Do it. You won't. And welcome to your weekend update, because all the good news waits for the weekend. I'm Reagan Jones. And I'm Alex Key. Let's get right into it. In light of recent scandals with Facebook and its handling of user data, many people are taking deeper dives into what exactly lies under Facebook's immense digital empire. One surprising find is an AI algorithm that will automatically generate dick pics of any user on the website as soon as they sign up. Mark Zuckerberg has gone on record to say, quote, this was supposed to be a preventative measure, stopping potential embarrassment for any individual on our platform. 
I promise, super duper pinky promise, that I'm not using them for anything weird. Promise, end quote. With everything going on around Hollywood recently, I just hope it generates dick pics for all users, not just the males. Mm. News coming from the North, goose levels have been rising in America, and geese are lining up, leading the revolution against oppression. Surprisingly enough, one of the main groups affected by this so-called armagoosin is golfers. And believe me, this is not a type of birdie they were looking for. With no end to the golfer geese war in sight, we go live to our local golf course where our very own... own... Oh, okay, looks like we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Our camera crew has actually been attacked by the very geese we're trying to spotlight. Looks like they hit a real bogey with this one. <laughs> Reagan, please, this is serious. Some of these guys have kids. Sorry, sorry. It looks like we have a special news story from one of our own correspondents, so why don't we go to live with Ryan in the field? I used to be like you, too. Always believing in people. Always wanted to see the good. Living in ignorance because it made me happy. That just isn't how the world works. All the evidence. All the time I spent asleep. I'm awake now. I need you to be awake now, too. There's too much to say now not to act. Bless you, Ryan. But we're going to head into a segment I call That's So Reagan. Today on That's So Reagan, we're talking Kardashians. TMZ recently leaked life insurance documents from the family. And let me tell you, it's a doozy. In these forums, it's been revealed that for every Kardashian pregnancy, a new makeup line is put into production using the baby's name. They should really name their show 19 Kims and Counting. In News Across the Pond, Prince Harry, the hotter brother, something's in line for the throne, is now engaged, which is wonderful for a few reasons, mainly because it made everybody forget about his nude weekend in Vegas a few years ago. That's a shepherd's pie I don't think anybody wants. Anyway, Harry had a video come out the other day showing his impression of the queen. <laughs> Upon seeing the video, the queen called him a whiny little muggle and had her guard smack him one of his three hairy chins. I mean, he was born a redhead. We all knew he was going to be the honored brother. And last but not least, some rumors have been coming out surrounding Meghan Markle's character on Suits and the possibility that she will be killed off. Some leaked script pages show that she will die in the most brave and British of fashions, being hung by a tea bag and thrown into the Boston Harbor. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Now let's go over to Alex for sports. Thanks, Reagan. In today's news, Major League Baseball is apparently losing money at an alarming rate. Because of this, they have been looking for sponsors in creative areas of advertisement to get back in the black. Last night's game between the Royals and the Bourgeoisie featured one of these new agreements. In one opening plays of the game, batter Mongo Human was struck with the ball from the first pitch, which was contributed by the first sponsor, Silly Putty. Bourgeoisie and team manager Man Fillmore commented on the play, saying that he's actually excited about the incident, and it gives the team an almost perfect plaster of the human face. In other news and recent hockey statistics, uh, recent hockey statistic, statistic, on average, players have minus four teeth. Back to you, Reagan. Thanks, Alex. Now, normally we go to Ryan in the field again, but it looks like he's actually been fired for that last report. You win some, you lose some, I guess. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in to the news tonight. Next up, we have Cooking with My Girl Ella. I'm Reagan Jones. And I'm Alex Key. And we don't really care once the cameras turn off. <laughs> Are you tired? 
tired of lies and dumb excuses and straight up shadiness? him today. Hey, you. Who, me? Yes, you. Is your nicotine addiction constantly getting in the way of you working? Are you sneaking off to the bathroom to get another fix? Or four? Uh, you're an addiction by expert. Won't you tell me? You should try the smoking band. Smoking band is easily assembled. Simply push the tack through the band and voila. After that, simply grab, pull, and release. You're right. I don't even feel like smoking anymore. I'm really tired. Smoking ban. Side effects may include blood loss, lower immune system, pain, infection, thoughts of why the hell am I doing this, followed by anger, possible thoughts of destabilizing the government. Do not use this if you ever felt like Che Guevara or company in the past six months. Ask your doctor if smoking ban is right for you. Smoking ban. Order yours now for the low payments of $25.95. Welcome back, I'm Ella, and welcome to Ella's Kitchen. And I'm here too. Okay, this is Alec and he's here. <laughs> so today I will show you how to do traditional Chinese dumpling. When we talk about dumpling, it's not pot stickers, it's not the uh, steamed one, but the boiled one. It's called shui jiao, that's his Chinese name. Do you want to try? Shui jiao. Great, shui jiao, that's is Chinese name. So for the ingredients, uh, today I prepared the cabbage, the ground pork, the salt, the two big eggs, and the some water. Of course, we also need this. This is called the dumpling wrappers. So, you know, for dumpling, we always eat them in a Chinese New Year's Eve because the shape of the dumpling is really like a Chinese Asian money. So if you can eat it in the Ch Chinese New Year, you can have the good luck in the coming year. So you can eat Chinese money? If you want to eat it and you can digest it. <laughs> okay, so now let's go to the first part. All you need to do now is to prepare a cabbage and slice it into a really, really thin strip. And then cut them into a uh, like really, really small piece. And then you can put all this cabbage with the salt mix them together and put them aside for like five to 10 minutes. After that, you can grab a handful of the cabbage and squeeze. Squeeze the yeah, cabbage? Squeeze the I've never had a dish with out of the cabbage. Squeezed cabbage, okay. Yeah, and after that, you need to put all these ingredients together with mm -hmm. this cabbage and salt. So now we have our filling. So all you need to do is to use a spoon or your hand just to mix them totally. Yeah. Okay. Good job. I think I got it. So this is squeezed cabbage. <laughs> yeah, and with pork. pork and got it. some like the oil, the eggs, and the soy sauce. Oh, all right. Yeah. So after that, all we need to do is to <laughs> set our station, our dumpling station. So you can put some wrappers in front of you. Yeah. So do you want to try how to wrapping it? Yeah, absolutely, here. Put, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, put the wrapper okay. on your hand. Step and one. Step one. <laughs> Use a tablespoon mm -hmm. to just have one tablespoon, tiny tablespoon. One tiny, one tiny That's tablespoon? That's too much, okay? Okay, I'm gonna make the Big Mac of, of dumplings. But it's well, really this. hard for you to nah. close them. There, that's a reason. So okay. after that, you need to use your finger to dig the water. Yeah, and run through, run through the edge. Okay, so just around around the edge here. Almost like, like you're licking an envelope yeah. to try and seal it up. So 
it can help you to seal them really closely. Now, what if yours turns into an oozy taco? Uh, uh, <laughs> it's kind of like a mini taco, <laughs> but you, you see, it's really messy now. Mm. So after that, all you need to do is to ask your friends and family to help you together. We need to repeat filling and wrapping. So now, you need this big guy. This is the pot. So have the pot full of water and heat them. Until the water boiling, you can put this dumpling into the water. And after you see this dumplings float on the water, you can put much more water in it. Wait, wait until it's boiled again. Now you can see this uh, dumpling become really swollen and the dough become transparent. It's a good time to Swollen and transparent, I have to say. Yeah. Again, never had food described as swollen and transparent. <laughs> yeah, and now you can put all this dumpling. So, da da! Hey, those look better than mine. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cooked dumpling. And after that, you can serve this with the linger or any other sauce, uh, any like dipping you like. So, would you like to try? Absolutely, I'd love yeah. to. Yeah. So, you can use fork or chopsticks to eat them. I'm authentic, I am. Oh. You're really good at using chopsticks. Perfect, what do you think? absolutely you perfect. Like it? Yes, it's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, as a matter of fact, I think I hear my producer calling, so I will be right back. Wait, that's my thumb. Oh, okay, but just remember to uh, pay attention to my new book that's Cook with Ella. And I come here to promotion it. I hope all you guys can enjoy cooking at home. So today I introduce you the original traditional Chinese dumpling called Shui Jiao. So see you next time. Bye. I've been left by myself. Nobody hears when I show. I've been left on my own. If I could read between the lines, I bet I'd know. What's wrong, man? You look like you saw a ghost. You know how hard it is? What? You not be with me. Children's lives are hard enough. Why? They have hardships through life, and sometimes they need a break. Help us! That's why we at the Color Me Company wanted to help. All you have to do is mail your coloring book with a self-addressed envelope to our facilities that are definitely not sweatshops. Our workers will take in your coloring book and hand color them for you using our amazing team of what our engineers call actual adults with hand-eye coordination that isn't total ass. Hi, I'm Jim Morrison, the U.S. Vice Principal. The Color Me Company has helped immensely with their patented workflow featuring microscopic precision, revolutionary separate but equal crayon fixtures, and 24-1 customer service. Try the Color Me Company today and make your children do better. They have no excuse. The Color Me Company. Why make it when you can fake it? 
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. I am now sitting down with up-and-coming up director J.P. Haley. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, thank man. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I wanted to pull you on the show today because you're an up-and-coming director. You mm -hmm. have some things you've worked on, but more. what I'm more fascinated by is there's a trailer we just saw mm -hmm. for a movie that yeah. you did. Yes. Was it, did, was it? You just did the trailer, you're trying to get funding for a movie, or what happened there? Um, it was actually a short film that I made about a month ago. Okay. Uh, I made a trailer for it, and that, that was the, uh, the end goal, was to get funding for it to make it into something bigger, because okay. the film did start off as a feature film, wow. and it slowly uh, died down into uh, a five or six minute short film. So. How do you go from a feature film to five or six minutes long? How does that happen? Um, so the feature film, uh, the story uh, started off uh, each different story was was based off of relationships. It's just that in each different, uh, every time it got shorter, the relationships mm -hmm. changed. And uh, I think it basically just went into uh, what I wanted the the main story to be, what I wanted the base to be. Okay. And when I got down to that to those uh, key components, it just got shorter. Hmm. Yeah. Are you willing to divulge what those key components are? Or is that like JP's little black book of, of writing secrets? Oh yeah. Secrets? Um, okay. I think there's some things I can tell you. I don't know mm -hmm. if I can tell you everything because well, I just want. One good little juicy detail about this one. So, uh, uh, in both the feature, f in the feature film script and in the short film that was made, uh, mm -hmm. the story is about a guy who uh, uh, loses his wife, and wow. uh, uh, it's about how he lost her, and uh, uh, just he gets a chance to talk to her, mm -hmm. and he, he explains what he's feeling and, and stuff like that. So it's basically about how he's coping with their relationship and uh, how it's going for him. Sounds sounds pretty heavy, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, okay, speaking of heavy, I mean, is this drawn from personal experience, if you don't mind me asking? Or? Um, I wouldn't say uh, direct personal experience. Mm -hmm. I think there's some things in my life that have happened that uh, influenced it. Uh, the, in the feature film, uh, the script is based off of a guy and his relationship with his dad. Mm -hmm. and I feel like I have a really strong relationship with my dad, and so that's uh, okay. one of the things that went into it. And uh, I, I kind of went into the, the whole concept of how it would feel to not have my dad around mm -hmm. and uh, how I would cope with that wow. and uh, just how anyone could co would cope with that and see uh, just having a character on screen that, that does that so other people can relate to it is something So this is almost just kind of exploring that realm for you then, yeah. this kind of like dark thought that you, well let's see what story would develop. Yeah, I think I wanted to take something that was from my life and just, just add to it and make it more cinematic mm -hmm. but uh, I, feel like, I feel like really that's how all stories should really be is, is something from your life or from something that you know and then just adding something to it to give it that extra kick. That's so. very true. Yeah. So you've been working on this, but um, you have something else that you've worked on, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. uh, a little less dramatic? Uh, I think this is just as dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> just as dramatic, okay. Can yeah. you tell us anything about it? Uh, the film is called Animal. Right. Uh, uh, it's about uh, two guys that get stuck inside of this building with a creature. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried to go for a different approach than most creature films go for, mm -hmm. uh, where they, they focus mainly on the monster and how it's terrorizing the people. Right. I wanted to focus more on the people and their relationships with, re relationships with each other as they go through this experience. Okay. And so uh, it's about two guys who are trying to make a decision on how they're going to get out of the situation. So. Sounds pretty tense, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have anything that you could show us? Like, do you have a clip you want to set up for us uh, or something? I actually have a clip for you today. Really? Uh, the clip is from the short version of the of the film. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually the same as the uh, the trailer and how that was a short film and it, it was based off a feature film. Okay. Uh, the short film that I made is based off a feature film, so this is a clip that will be inside the feature film. Okay, that makes sense. perfect. So. Um, I would love to take a look at that clip. So. Thank you so much for stopping by, JP. And this is a look at JP's newest movie, Animal. Transport is in 22 minutes. 22 minutes and we both survive. Mike, we've been running for days. You're telling me you can't wait 22 minutes? Just 
Ladies and gentlemen, Shelby and the Gaddies. Ladies and gentlemen, Shelby and the Gaddies, thank you so much for joining us. It was me the whole time. I was never Steve. What? Good night. <laughs>